Sickle cell disease, SCD, is an inherited blood disorder that affects the production of hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen throughout the body. In people with SCD, the hemoglobin protein is abnormal, causing the red blood cells to take on a crescent or sickle shape instead of the normal round shape. These sickle cells can get stuck in small blood vessels, which can block blood flow to organs and tissues, leading to severe pain, organ damage, and a range of other complications. There are several types of sickle cell disease, SCD, but the three most common types are, sickle cell anemia, HBSS, sickle hemoglobin C disease, HBSC, sickle beta thalassemia. Sickle cell anemia, HBSS, is the most common and severe form of sickle cell disease, SCD. People with HBSS inherit two copies of the sickle cell gene, one from each parent. This results in the production of mostly abnormal hemoglobin, hemoglobin S, which causes red blood cells to become stiff and sickle-shaped. These sickle-shaped red blood cells can get stuck in small blood vessels, blocking blood flow and causing pain, organ damage, and an increased risk of infections. People with HBSS can experience a range of complications, including, chronic pain, sickle cell pain can occur in any part of the body, and the severity and duration of pain episodes can vary widely. Painful episodes can be triggered by factors such as stress, dehydration, or changes in temperature. Acute chest syndrome, this is a serious complication of SCD that occurs when sickle cells block blood vessels in the lungs, leading to chest pain, difficulty breathing, and a risk of respiratory failure. Stroke, sickle cells can also block blood vessels in the brain, leading to a stroke. Children with HBSS have a particularly high risk of stroke. Organ damage. Sickle cells can cause damage to a range of organs, including the spleen, kidneys, liver, and eyes. Infections People with HBSS have an increased risk of infections, particularly those caused by bacteria that can cause pneumonia or meningitis. There is currently no cure for HBSS, but treatment options can help manage the symptoms and complications of the disease. This may include pain management, blood transfusions, and medications to reduce the risk of infections. Bone marrow transplants may also be a potential cure for some people with HBSS. Sickle hemoglobin C disease, HBSC, is a type of sickle cell disease, SCD, that occurs when a person inherits one copy of the sickle cell gene and one copy of a different abnormal hemoglobin gene called hemoglobin C. People with HBSC produce both sickle hemoglobin, HBS, and hemoglobin C, HBC, in their red blood cells. While HBC is also an abnormal hemoglobin, it does not cause the same degree of sickling as HBS. As a result, HBSC is typically a milder form of SCD compared to sickle cell anemia, HBSS, which occurs when a person inherits two copies of the sickle cell gene. However, people with HBSC can still experience a range of complications, including, pain. People with HBSC can experience episodes of pain, similar to those seen in HBSS. However, the pain is often less severe and less frequent. Anemia, HBSC can cause anemia, a condition in which the body does not produce enough red blood cells. This can cause fatigue, weakness, and shortness of breath. Infections, people with HBSC have an increased risk of infections, particularly those caused by bacteria that can cause pneumonia or meningitis. Eye problems, HBSC can cause a range of eye problems, including retinopathy, which is damage to the retina of the eye. Treatment for HBSC focuses on managing the symptoms and complications of the disease. This may include pain management, blood transfusions, and medications to reduce the risk of infections. Regular medical checkups are also important to monitor for any potential complications. Sickle beta thalassemia is a type of sickle cell disease, SCD, that occurs when a person inherits one copy of the sickle cell gene and one copy of a gene for beta thalassemia a blood disorder that affects the production of beta-globin. Beta-thalassemia can cause reduced production of beta-globin, which is needed to make hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen throughout the body. The severity of sickle beta-thalassemia depends on the degree to which beta-globin production is affected. Sickle beta-thalassemia can be classified into two main types, sickle beta-plus thalassemia, this type of SCD results from the inheritance of one sickle cell gene and one beta-thalassemia gene that produces some functional beta-globin. People with sickle beta-plus thalassemia typically have milder symptoms than those with sickle cell anemia, HBSS, or sickle hemoglobin C disease, HBSC. 
Sickle beta-0 thalassemia, this type of SCD results from the inheritance of one sickle cell gene and one beta thalassemia gene that produces no functional beta globin. People with sickle beta-0 thalassemia typically have symptoms similar to those with sickle cell anemia, HBSS. Sickle cell disease, SCD, is caused by mutations in the HBB gene, which provides instructions for making the beta globin subunit of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein found in red blood cells that carries oxygen throughout the body. Normally, hemoglobin molecules are shaped like discs, which allows red blood cells to flow smoothly through blood vessels. However, in people with SCD, the HBB gene mutation causes the beta globin subunits to stick together and form abnormal hemoglobin molecules that can cause red blood cells to become stiff and sickle shaped. These sickle cells can then get stuck in small blood vessels, causing blockages and reducing blood flow to organs and tissues. This can result in a range of complications, including pain, organ damage, and an increased risk of infections. SCD is an inherited condition, which means that it is passed down from parents to their children through their genes. To develop SCD, a person must inherit two copies of the mutated HBB gene, one from each parent. People who inherit only one copy of the mutated gene, from one parent, have sickle cell trait and are typically asymptomatic but can pass the trait on to their children. The symptoms of sickle cell disease, SCD, can vary depending on the type of SCD a person has and the severity of the disease. Some common symptoms of SCD include, pain. SCD can cause episodes of pain, also known as a sickle cell crisis, which can occur anywhere in the body. Pain can range from mild to severe and may last for several hours or days. Anemia, SCD can cause anemia, a condition in which the body does not produce enough red blood cells. Anemia can cause fatigue, weakness, and shortness of breath. Jaundice, SCD can cause a buildup of bilirubin in the blood, which can cause yellowing of the skin and eyes. Swelling of hands and feet. SCD can cause swelling in the hands and feet, also known as hand-foot syndrome. Infections, people with SCD have an increased risk of infections, particularly those caused by bacteria that can cause pneumonia or meningitis. Delayed growth and development, SCD can cause delayed growth and development in children. Vision problems, SCD can cause a range of eye problems, including damage to the retina of the eye. Priapism, SCD can cause priapism, a painful erection that lasts for several hours and can lead to permanent damage if not treated promptly. Organ damage, over time, SCD can cause damage to organs such as the spleen, liver, and kidneys. Stroke, SCD can increase the risk of stroke, particularly in children. There is currently no cure for sickle cell disease, SCD, but there are treatments available to manage the symptoms and complications of the disease. Treatment options may vary depending on the type and severity of SCD. Some common treatments include, pain management. Pain management is a critical aspect of treating SCD. Mild pain can be managed with over-the-counter pain relievers, while more severe pain may require prescription pain medications. Hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea is a medication that can help reduce the frequency and severity of pain episodes in people with SCD. It works by increasing the production of fetal hemoglobin which can help prevent the formation of sickle-shaped red blood cells. Blood transfusions. Blood transfusions can help reduce the risk of complications associated with SCD, such as stroke and organ damage. Regular blood transfusions may be recommended for some people with SCD. Bone marrow transplant. A bone marrow transplant may be a potential cure for some people with SCD. However, it is a risky procedure and may not be an option for everyone. Antibiotics. Antibiotics may be prescribed to help prevent infections in people with SCD. Vaccinations. People with SCD should receive vaccinations to help prevent infections, such as pneumonia and meningitis. Oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy may be used to help manage pain and reduce the risk of complications associated with SCD. Education and support. Education and support are important aspects of managing SCD. People with SCD and their families should receive education on managing the disease and have access to support groups and counseling services.